Hi everyone, my name is Asis and I am currently working as a software developer in the US. In this video, I want to share with you the story of how I got my job offer in the United States directly from India. I will take you through the entire journey starting from my first call with the recruiter to finally arriving in the US. I will also talk about the interview process including the types of questions I was asked and how long the visa process took. I will share three more ways you can get a job in the US in this video so stay tuned. So it all began in June of 2022 while I was working at Adobe India. One fine day, after coming back from from work, I found a message on LinkedIn from a US based recruiter about an opportunity to work at Amazon in US. This came as a surprise to me as I didn't apply for this job and wasn't even working at Amazon. I knew that many people who join Amazon India moved to US after a few years of working but I wasn't aware that it was possible to make the move even if you're not currently working at Amazon. As someone who had never been outside of India, this felt like a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. I replied to the recruiter that yes, I am interested in the job. Soon after, the recruiter scheduled a call to explain explained me the process and why I was eligible to work in the US. During the call, I learned that I qualified to move to US under L1B visa due to my previous experience at Amazon India, where I worked for more than a year. L1B visa is an intra-company transfer visa for people with specialized knowledge. So if you are working as a software developer or other similar role at a company which has headquarters in US, you are eligible for this visa. In my case, the situation was slightly different since I wasn't currently working at Amazon. To confirm my eligibility, I researched the L1 visa on Wikipedia and learned that you are eligible for an intra-company transfer if you have worked in offices outside of the US for at least one continuous year within the previous three years. I had worked at Amazon India for nearly one and a half year before joining Adobe in March 2021. Soon after the call with the recruiter, my application process started. I received an email with a link to apply for the US role. After completing the application form, I received a two-hour long online coding test which needed to be completed within a week. I set aside some time on a Friday evening to complete the test. The coding test consisted of two coding problems of medium difficulty along with multiple choice questions on system design and behavioral aspect. I managed to solve both coding problems within 45 minutes and answer the MCQs to the best of my ability. Two days later, I received the results and the recruiter informed me that I had progressed to the next stage which was the interview. Knowing that I needed time for preparation, I requested three weeks of time before my interviews. The recruiter agreed and provided me with resources to use during the preparation. To prepare for my interview, I revised fundamental data structures and algorithms and went through most like problems on lead code and commonly asked questions at Amazon interviews. All of my interviews were scheduled on the same day. These interviews were for SD2 role and there were a total of 4 rounds, 3 of which were coding and one was a system design round. First round was low level design and coding where I was asked to design and code a real world system following good coding principles. The complexity of the problem increased gradually as time progressed. Second round was system design requiring me to come up with APIs, databases, schemas and high level design for a real world system. The third and the fourth round were coding rounds where I had to solve problems using data structures and algorithms. Amazon also focuses on behavioral questions and in all of my rounds, I was asked questions based on Amazon's leadership principles. After completing the interviews, I was eagerly waiting for the results and after not getting the response for 5 days, I reached out to the recruiter on LinkedIn to check if there is any update. I was relaxed to know that my interview evaluation process was not yet complete. The following day, the recruiter informed me that I had successfully cleared the interviews for SD2 role. I was very happy to hear the news and shared it with my family and friends. It was a truly exciting moment for me and my family as I was the first one to get a job outside India. Few days later, the offer discussion began and I was given the option to select my preferred job location in the US. I was presented with 5 options to choose from and was also offered the possibility of working remotely. I chose Seattle as my preferred location since that's where Amazon's headquarters is. During the offer discussion, I was also asked about my salary expectations. After conducting thorough research on salary, benchmarks from sources such as Leadcode, Blind and other platforms, I provided a figure that aligned with the current market rates for some with my levels of experience and role. Before receiving the official offer letter, I went through team matching calls with the hiring manager and I was ultimately matched with a team that I liked. Finally, in the second week of August, I received my offer letter. However, the initial joining date mentioned in the offer letter was tentative as it depended on the speed at which I could obtain my visa. A few days after receiving the offer letter, Amazon initiated the visa and relocation process on my behalf. I completed various forms and applied for the visa application. After the application, I booked visa appointment slots for the biometric and interview at the Chennai office. My appointment date was 3 weeks later on September 23rd and 28th. Due to the 5 day gap between the biometric and the interview appointment, I had to book 2 round trips to Chennai. All the hotel and travel expenses were covered as part of relocation process. In my visa interview, I was asked questions like where I would be staying, how much is my base salary and what is my specialized knowledge. I had prepared answers to commonly asked questions which helped me perform well in the interview. I passed the interview and a week later, my visa was delivered to my apartment in Bangalore. After receiving the visa, I informed 
informed the relocation team and requested the hiring team to update my joining date. A few weeks later, I received my updated offer letter with a new joining date of 28th November. After my start date was confirmed, I contacted the relocation service provided by Amazon to arrange for the pickup and transportation of my belonging from my apartment in Bangalore to US. On 24th November, I boarded a late night Qatar Airways flight from Bangalore airport to Seattle. This was my first time leaving India. While I was excited for the new opportunity, I was also a bit sad that I would be staying away from my family and home country. My flight took around 25 hours and I finally arrived in Seattle on 25th November. From the airport, I took a cab to my temporary apartment which was part of the relocation package provided by Amazon. The package included 45 days of temporary accommodation, a rental car for 30 days and a relocation bonus to help me sustain myself until I received my first salary. Upon reaching my temporary accommodation, I collected my laptops and other work-related equipment which had already been sent to my address. However, due to an issue in the onboarding process, my start date was postponed by a week. I took that extra time to relax, settle into my new apartment and overcome the jet lag which bothered me for the first three days. I also took this opportunity to explore popular places in Seattle such as the Space Nadine. Overall, it took me close to five months from the first call with the recruiter to finally arrive in the US. While I obtained my job offer through L1B visa, there are three other common ways to secure a job in US if you are not a US citizen. First option is the H1 visa which is obtained through a lottery system where applicants are selected randomly. If your H1 visa gets picked up in the lottery, you can work in the US. As an H1 visa holder, you have the flexibility to apply directly to the US locations. However, it's important to note that in order to pursue this option, your employer must be willing to sponsor your H1 visa. They will be responsible for filing the necessary paperwork and supporting your visa application process. The second way is through the student visa, also known as F1 visa. The F1 visa is a non-immigrant visa that allows foreign students to pursue education in the US. If your degree is in a STEM field, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering or Mathematics, you may be eligible for a work visa for up to three years after completing your education. During these three years, you can keep applying for H1 visa. If approved, you can continue working in the US. Another option is through obtaining a green card. Although this method is the most difficult to achieve and can take a long time for individuals on other visas, green card holders have the ability to live and work in the US for as long as they want. So that's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you have any questions or want me to make a video on any other topic, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.